Everywhere you look, someone's saying that AI is coming for your job. Traders replaced, coders replaced, even artists replaced. Though to be fair, some of those AI paintings do look like some fever dreams. But what about quant finance, the world where maths, nerds, programmers and investors collide? Is AI about to make quants irrelevant or is it just the next big tool in our already absurdly complicated toolbox? Today we're actually going to break it down, what AI is actually doing in quant finance right now, whether it's hype, whether it's reality and most importantly, if you're someone that's learning maths, coding or preparing for a quant career, what does this all mean for you? Where do you fit in this bigger picture? Because spoiler, it is actually not as simple as saying AI takes over, humans pack up and leave. If it were, none of us probably would have a job or I wouldn't have this YouTube channel or anything really. And honestly, that's part of why this uh, topic actually fascinates me. Because unlike most AI takeover conversations that focus on creative jobs or customer service, quant finance sits, I would say, right at the intersection of uh, logic and learning. So it's already been a battle between human models and machine learning models for quite a few years now long before ChatGPT even existed. The question now is, I guess, has AI finally crossed the threshold from being an assistant to being the main act? So let's see. When most people imagine AI in finance, they picture some all-knowing machine learning model predicting the stock market perfectly like a crystal ball with some Python syntax. But in reality, the finance world is much less glamorous. Yes, of course, AI and machine learning are being used and quite heavily. There's absolutely no questioning that. Think, you know, natural language processing to scrape news and sentiment. Think reinforcement learning to optimize trading strategies and think like anomaly detection to monitor risk. And these are just a few generic, very small examples after all. But here's the catch. These models don't actually live in a vacuum. Financial markets are noisy, they are messy, and they are adversarial. So if you ever try to train a model on market data, you'll know it feels less like training ChatGPT and more like trying to teach your cat algebra. So is AI taking over quant finance? Well, not exactly. It's more like quant finance has absorbed, has already absorbed AI into its bloodstream. But quants still need to build, they need to test, they need to debug and decide how these models actually work. Even the most advanced AI struggles with what is called non-stationarity, the fact that markets behavior changes constantly. What works really beautifully in one period might completely crumble in another. So while an AI can learn these patterns, it can't necessarily understand them, or at least not yet. I'm not saying it won't ever reach that point. But this is where the massive difference is being made. It is also worth remembering that many of the biggest hedge funds have been experimenting with machine learning since pretty much the early 2010s, I would say. But the Holy Grail, which is a fully autonomous trading system that reliably just prints money, still doesn't exist because markets do fight back and every edge you find gets arbitraged away by someone else quite quickly. In other words, finance is an arms race, I would say, and AI is just the latest weapon. But you still need someone that knows when to pull the trigger. Okay, let's get a bit more specific in here. Here are the three main big areas where AI is making waves at the moment. The first one is signal generation. So quants have always looked for patterns in data. So AI just makes it possible to find more complex patterns. For example, think of some neural network that detects subtle relationships in high frequency or the book data. Second would be execution algorithms. So even if you know what you want to trade, you need to trade it efficiently. Reinforcement learning can optimize execution. So deciding when and how to place orders in order to minimize your market impact, let's say. And the third one is risk management. So AI isn't just about returns, it's also about not blowing up. So unsupervised learning, for example, helps detect uh, anomalies or risks before humans would. So think of it as like a portfolio's early warning system. But then here's the most important point. These models actually are not at all some kind of uh, financial oracle. They need constant calibration, they overfit very easily, and they can break pretty spectacularly when regimes change, which in markets happens pretty much all the time. To put it into perspective, I would even say it's like hiring Sherlock Holmes as your intern. Yes, they might solve uh, mysteries you didn't know existed in the first place, 
but sometimes they'll also chase red herrings for weeks and cost you millions. And even beyond these core areas, AI is quietly transforming the operational side of finance as well. Natural language models summarize research papers or earning calls in seconds. Chatbots help uh, internal teams query data faster, and generative AI is already quite deep into the core of uh, writing and testing code. But in practice, every successful application of AI in finance comes down to data quality and to domain knowledge. So if you give a model bad data, it will happily learn completely garbage correlations or give it no economic intuition and it will overfit to noise faster than you can say sharp ratio. So while AI is actually quite a powerful tool, it's only as good as the quant that's guiding it. A bit like giving a Formula One car to someone who's just learned to parallel park. Before we dive into the future of AI and quants, let's be real. No AI can ever replace showing up to the office, looking, put together, feeling confident and connecting with people face to face, which is a huge part of the job if you ask me. And that's why I want to show you something that actually become a key part of my everyday routine from today's sponsor Gaston Luga. They are a Swedish brand from Stockholm known for their Scandinavian minimalist designs. Super sleek, practical and perfect for city life. I've been using their Splash Utility backpack 16 inch in black and honestly is the ideal everyday backpack for someone like me. Whether I'm heading into the office, whether I'm traveling or just holding my laptop and all of my notebooks to a cafe to overthink a model. It's water resistant and has this structured shape that fits everything neatly, including a 16 inch laptop. And it actually looks really professional, which is saying something given how most uh, tech backpacks look like they could double up as camping gear at any day. Plus, Gaston Luca is actually really leaning into sustainability. They're shifting to using only eco-friendly materials across their products, which I absolutely love and admire. It's that perfect mix, I would say, of smart design and responsible production. If you're interested in checking them out or getting one, you can use my code YUANA15 for 15% off at GastonLuga.com. I will also have the link and details in the description. All right, thank you again for Gaston Luga for sponsoring this video and let's see where quants fit into all of this AI machinery. You're probably already asking, if AI is so powerful, why not just replace us? As I've said before, the thing is AI does not understand markets. It doesn't know about insensitive regulations, liquidity crises or human psychology, really. That's where the quant needs to come in. Quants really are the translators. They connect mathematical models to financial reality. We ask the right questions. Is this signal causal or is it just spurious correlation? Is this reinforcement learner optimizing for returns or just overfitting for training data? I would even go further and say that quants are also quite the firefighters, you know? Models break, data is really messy, regulators might call, markets behave in ways that your backtest just did not anticipate at all. And also a big part of being a quant dev like me is debugging, so not just code, but entire modeling frameworks and infrastructure. So the role is definitely not disappearing. If anything, it is evolving. So instead of writing everything from scratch, we're learning to build AI tools intelligently. So think less AI replacing quants and more AI makes quants who know how to use it a lot more valuable. If you really want to use some big words here, I would even say that that's the key shift. So the best quants are no longer just mathematicians or programmers, they are architects of intelligence. So they understand when to trust automation and when to step in manually. So in some ways, AI is actually forcing quants to level up. So instead of memorizing formulas, you now need to understand how models learn, where they fell, and how to interpret their outputs. So it's not about having blind faith in the model, it's about knowing its limits better than it knows itself. So I would say the conclusion of this is that, ironically, the rise of AI has made the human element even more important. So creativity, skepticism, and the ability to ask why rather than just how because in the end finance isn't run by machines it's run by insensitives and those are very very human okay let's get practical if you're someone watching this because you want to become a quant dev or a quant researcher what does this ai revolution mean for your preparation first maths still matters AI models are built on probability, statistics, linear algebra, and optimization. So you can't escape it. If you don't understand the maths, you won't understand why your model is behaving the way that it does, which is the key of everything that quants are doing. Second, probably you've guessed it already, coding matters even more. So knowing Python, C++, Java, 
isn't really optional anymore, it's quite essential. And not just writing scripts, but writing efficient production ready code. Because AI in finance isn't really a Kaggle competition, it has to be run in real time, scale without breaking. Third, I would say be curious about AI that's really encouraged, but don't become a hype victim. So learn machine learning fundamentals, train models on financial data sets, try everything, but also learn when to say this model looks good in backtest, but I would not trust it in production. That skepticism, that's what makes you valuable. And finally, adaptability is actually everything. Quant finance has already evolved. First it was stochastic calculus, then it was Monte Carlo methods, then it was statistical arbitrage, and now it is machine learning. I would say that the quants who actually thrive in these environments are the ones who learn the new tools without forgetting the old principles. So if you're studying right now, I would say that this is the best time to experiment. But small project, you know, backtest trading signals, try sentiment analysis on financial news, or even use reinforcement learning to model simple portfolio decisions. You'll learn more from failure than from any course, in my opinion. Also, I would say it's quite important to pay attention to the broader ecosystem. So, you know, data engineering, cloud computing, deployment pipelines. Modern quant work is as much infrastructure as it is ideas. The best models are useless if they cannot run in production without crashing or if they can't run fast enough. So yeah, bottom line is learn the maths, learn the code, but also learn how to think critically about both. Because AI may automate decisions, but judgment will always belong to the human. So is AI taking over quant finance? No, but it is reshaping it. So the firms that adapt are going to be the ones that thrive, in my opinion. And the people who can blend mathematical insight, coding skills and critical thinking, they're going to be the ones who are at the center of it all. So if you're someone that's learning maths or coding right now, I can reassure you though that this is not a time to be scared at all. It's actually a time to be excited because the toolbox of a quant has never been richer and the opportunities have never been bigger. Who knows, maybe in a few years you're going to be the one designing the AI systems everyone is panicking about on the news. So stay curious, stay skeptical and remember that AI is not replacing quants. It's making the game even more interesting. That actually brings me to the end of the video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope that you have enjoyed it. And if you did, do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more maths, quant finance and studying content. And if you're interested in building relationships with people with similar interests to build a community, do check out my Discord server. You have the link in the description below. And if you want more of me, I am a lot more active on Instagram. So don't hesitate to go and join me on there. That's all from me. Good luck in your journey and hope to see you in the next one. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feeling of